Hey, what's going on everybody? Timmy, aka Echo Side Fiend here. So, over the past couple weeks I've been doing reviews of the original six Jokers cards. Uh, earlier this week I uh, uploaded the uh, review of the first part of the six Jokers card, which is of course the Wraith Shangri-La, which of course brings us then to today. We'll be taking a look at the second part of that, Hell's Pit. Uh, as far as I know, this is just referred to as Hell's Pit, not the Wraith Hell's Pit, uh, even though the first one is the Wraith Shangri-La. It just says on the top of each one, Hell's Pit. I've never heard anybody else refer to it as the Wraith Hell's Pit. That's how I was calling it at first, because that's what I thought it was, but uh, apparently not. So, uh, But yeah, this is the second part of the Six Jokers card. It was supposed to come out exactly a year, is the way that they uh, first uh, announced it, after um, the Wraith Shangri-La. Uh, it ended up getting pushed back a year, uh, another year, to 2004. So it should have come out in 2003. I don't remember the exact release date, but um, it was uh, um, 2004, though, that it ended up coming out, which is fine. Didn't bother me any. But uh, so this one is obviously very dark. They're obviously rapping about hell, um, and it does say right on the cover, the darkest horror rap album from the Insane Clown Posse ever. Uh, I would agree. It is very dark. Uh, one thing I will point out, though, I felt that this came off as very forced. Uh, I. You know, I've always said the Riddle Box um, is very dark. I've always said that's at them at their darkest because uh, it feels very natural. It doesn't feel like they were like, oh, we got to write the darkest thing ever. It just felt like they were just writing songs that they wanted to write, you know. And this one does come across as like Shaggy and Jay sat down and were like, okay, brainstorm. We have to come up with the darkest album ever. That's not to say it's not good, though. I like it a lot. Uh, I listened to it. Uh, I listened to it like crazy when it first came out. I still listen to it pretty frequently. I have a few friends that aren't even terribly into ICP that do like this album. Um, so uh, it, it is it is a good album. Even though I'm saying it's felt a little forced, I'm not saying it's not good. It is very, very good. Um, it came out in, uh, this, both look exactly the same, but uh, it came out with two different DVDs. Uh, one came with, uh, I don't know which one I've gotten which, but one came with um, uh, live from, I believe, Red Rocks in Colorado, and then also had a video for Real Underground Baby. Uh, and then the other one had... Uh, a um, half hour uh, long uh, video, very, I guess, kind of Michael Jackson thriller-ish, you know, like a video slash mini movie uh, for bowling balls, which was very good. I love that. Uh, it was really good. Um, and they came with uh, a 3D version and a standard version. And apparently the 3D version was the very first movie, uh, video, anything, I guess, filmed in HD 3D. So that's pretty cool. Um, I've actually never even watched it in 3D because you had to, like, the glasses it came with where you had to literally hold up and just never got around to doing that but so uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the packaging cover is very cool uh very it looks like a um like a um you know a movie theater poster uh and then uh, we turn it around it also has the um uh the credits down here look like a movie like, like a movie poster i believe that's the first time they did that Maybe they did it on the Wraith, uh, Shangri-La, I can't remember, but uh, regardless, it's uh, early on anyway when they started doing that. Um, but uh, I, I like the cover a lot, you know, got a lot going on there. I always wanted to get a shirt of it, I never did. And I'm assuming they probably had it, but just never did. And then it says uh, open up, and you got a little booklet we'll take a look through there, and then it has like just the uh, the Wraith, uh, you know, and this is the one where I, I feel like, you know, the, the Shangri-La was going like, like welcoming you in, and this is saying like, get out of here, stay away, you know, and... Uh, so that's pretty cool. I got all the fire behind it. Obviously, a red case and uh, very uh, similar to um, the Amazing Jekyll Brothers. So, uh, as far as the tracks, we'll go ahead and take a look at that. Um, well, the back we got here a little kind of a synopsis here. Uh, it says, "Cast into the bowels of the underworld, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope must strive to survive the terrible torments, the unbelievable horrors, and the devastating dementia that lie for them in Hell's Pit." So, uh, track listing uh, intro. Walk into the Darkness, Suicide Hotline, CPKs, which is, of course, Crooked Preacher Killers, Truly Alone, Every Day I Die, Night of the 44, The Witch, Bowling Balls, 24, Burning Up, Sedatives, In My Room, Base Head Attack, Angels Falling, Manic Depressive, and Real Underground Baby. Uh, standout tracks to me, I love Walk into the Darkness, uh, Suicide Hotline is awesome, I love CPKs, uh, Truly Alone is great. Uh, I like Night of the 44. The Witch is my track on here, though. I love that. It's like this real chill, kind of like mellow. Like the beat is real mellow. And uh, it's got a very uh, 
kind of very like um, almost like a to me anyway like a, a mid to late 90s hip hop sound, uh, sound to the music and then of course the uh, the lyrics are obviously uh, you know creepy uh, Violent J and Shaggy Two Dope talking about the witch which I, I think is their like their version of the devil um, you know kind of like basically following them around as they're doing stuff and uh, just a really really chill song even though like the content is pretty you know pretty deep uh, not necessarily deep but just kind of kind of creepy you know um, uh, bowling balls is awesome. That one uh, obviously is the one that goes to the video. Uh, I like sedatives. Uh, that one's cool because it starts off. I like uh, like it's kind of the beats kind of fast, and then when in the very early on, like Jay takes his sedatives and everything kind of slows down. So that's pretty cool. Uh, in my room is cool. Uh, the story in that one is really creepy. And uh, that's the those are the big the big standout ones. I and mean, the whole album's good, but those are the ones that really stand out to me. So if I had to pick any. Uh, like CPKs, I like a lot. Uh, just the, the content of that. I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've made pretty clear about what I feel about religion. I'm not condoning going out and killing preachers, but I like the uh, the idea of that. You know, the ones that you know do terrible things in, in the song, they're doing it. But then they also in the song they say it's not right. You know, it's like what they're doing isn't 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 right. So uh, a little booklet it came with. It's kind of a little quick little history of the six Joker's cards. Just kind of goes through. Uh, a quick little, uh, I guess it's just the track listing, yeah, and then like the year that it came out, so you got Carnival of Carnage, Ringmaster, and then is that right, yeah, just the, yep, just the track listing for each one, and then like a photo, so, pretty cool little thing, obviously you got the little box, which is my favorite, Great Malenko, and then, uh, oh, you got, uh, so the Jekyll Brothers, and then obviously kind of has the Bizarre Bizarre, kind of mixed in there too, and then, I read Shanger a lot, and obviously has a little bit of uh, um, Wizard of the Hood, and Hell's Pit. So, and then is that some credits there? Uh, yeah, just a little synopsis that they completed the story. So, take a look at the inside. I still think it's kind of funny. This looks <laughs> the CD looks exactly like 311's uh, self-titled. Uh, just the, uh, the the one that just said uh, down and all that on it. Just the the stand the straight up. 311 album. It's like exactly the same. If you set them next to each other, the only way you'd be able to tell them apart is the psychopathic records, and I think they were on Capricorn. So, booklet here. So, this is the, comes with the 3D glasses. So, so then the, uh, all the rest of it is just pretty much um, their uh, lyrics to all the songs, just like they did in Shangri La. It's very, uh, it's hard to follow though. Uh, I think some other reviewers have pointed that out. Like, uh, I've never really tried to follow along with them anyway, but, uh, so just some cool artwork mixed with the, um, with the, uh, lyrics. So it's kind of all hell, hell type of artwork. So you got, like, I mean, everything is in circles and everything. So if you were to, like, sit and try to, try to read through this, you know, it'd be kind of tricky. So, so yeah, just all the way up through. And then the, or is it the very back page, or is it right here? Yep, yeah, that stuff falling out. So, has a photo of Violent J and Shaggy Too Dope without face paint. I think that was, obviously, uh, behind the paint was out at this time, but this is, I think, the first time that they really, like, put it in an album, you know, like, really letting uh, people know if you didn't buy the book and hadn't seen it, you know, that was the first time you'd probably see without, see them without paint, so. Um, yeah, so overall, uh, I, I think this is definitely a cool album. It was definitely a good way to, to end the, the series. So, um, I definitely, I would give it a, a four out of five. Um, uh, it's, like I said, it felt a little forced. Um, I, I, I just feel like their other stuff felt like more natural. Um, just more, you know, like the creativeness just on other, other, other work just felt more, what they were writing just felt natural. That's the best way I can describe it, you know, just like their actual writing style, you know, where this one I felt like they got together and they had to get the, the darkest album they could because that's what they had promised. And it is dark. It is very dark. Um, it is a good album. It does put me in a little bit of a weird mood. I, I listen to it pretty frequently, but I usually have to be in a specific mood already to listen to it. Um, if I'm not, it ends up kind of just putting me, not not making me in a bad mood, but just kind of like a weird, kind of like, ugh, you know, kind of 
just a uh, uh, strange, strange mood, I guess is how I, how, how I can describe it. Uh, and uh, Missing Link Lost does that to me as well. I actually, I love that album and I don't listen to it a lot because it just kind of puts me in this like odd mood. It just like if I'm in a good mood and throw it in, it kind of it brings me down a little bit and it just kind of I don't know. It's a, but it's a great album. Uh, you know, Missing Link Lost is a great album, just like Hell's Pit. So they just kind of I guess just the lyrics and the imagery and the the content overall just kind of give me a, a weird like eh, you know kind of just again not depressed. I don't I'm not I don't really battle depression or anything like that, but just kind of like just uh, uh, just brings me down I guess is the best way I can describe it so but it is a good album um, the, the whole six jokers cards I think are great and the new ones uh, that are on, and on the way right now um, I'll, I'll be at Hollow Wicked to see the, the fourth unveiled so I'm looking forward to that um, those are great too so uh, overall uh, as far as Hell's Pit like I said four out of five and uh, just the entire uh, six Joker's cards. Um, I don't really have a way to rate them, I guess, but I would just recommend them to to uh, pretty much anybody. I mean, I think if anybody gave them a shot, even if they're not an ICP fan, I think if anybody gave the six Joker's cards uh, a shot, I think you know some people might enjoy them, some people might not, but I, I think some would, even if they're just kind of dismissive of ICP. You know, I think if they really gave it, you know, the whole story a shot, I think they would enjoy it. So. Uh, overall, I think this is a fitting ending um, to the to the uh, six Joker's cards. Uh, uh, a good compliment to um, uh, the Wraith Shangri La, you know, a yin and a yang, so to speak, and highly recommend it. So, um, I guess that's pretty much all I got to say about Hell's Pit. So, uh, uh, if you've watched all the reviews, I appreciate it. And um, as usual, thank you for watching and thank you for the support. And I'm going to keep making videos, keep stuff coming. So this is just the end of the original Six Jokers Cards reviews, but i got more coming. So, as always, thank you for the support. This is Timmy, a.k.a. Echo Side Fiend, and I will catch you in the next one.